Hello friends, welcome to the investment banking module of Wall Street Mojo. Today's topic is return on invested capital ratio. And friends, this is one of the most important topic under ratio analysis. This ratio or this formula of ratio is used predominantly for two purposes. Number one, it is used to evaluate how much return a particular company is giving. The second purpose of evaluation or using this formula is when the company wants to make any investment decision. If, for example, I have some surplus cash and I want to invest that cash in a particular company, this formula or this ratio helps us determine what return my investment is going to generate for me. For example, if I want to invest $1 million in a particular company, Return on invested capital of that particular company will help me understand my $1 million is going to generate how much return for me. Before we go on to the specific formula of computing return on invested capital, let us quickly look at this particular chart. This is the return on invested capital of Home Depot company. So the Home Depot company's return on invested capital ratio has shown an increasing trend over the last seven years and currently it stands at 25.89%. What does 25.89% means? 25.89% means on every $100 of capital invested in this company, the company is generating a return of $25.89. That means if the any particular shareholder has invested $100 in the company, the company is generating him a return of $25.89. And as you can see, the return on invested capital has shown an increasing trend for the company over the last seven years. That means every year the company has generated more return or more return percentage as compared to the previous year. Now, let us try to understand how to compute the return on invested capital? The return of invested capital ratios formula is net income minus dividend divided by debt plus equity. Therefore, there are two components to this formula, two components to the return on invested capital formula. There is a numerator and then we have a denominator. The numerator is net income minus dividend, whereas denominator is equity plus debt. We will talk about all these components, but basically the ROIC or return on invested capital is nothing but net income, that is numerator that we have discussed above, net income minus dividend divided by equity plus debt. If we have understood all these four terms, it is easy for us to compute the return on invested capital for any company. Let us start with the term net income. What does the term net income means? Net income means the net profit which the company has generated from its operations. Okay, Net profit for the year the company has generated. And whether it's a pre-tax profit or post-tax profit, it is a post-tax profit. That means after doing all the activities, what is the net profit after tax that the company has generated? The company is no more going to pay any tax on these amounts. This is the amount which is after tax. Then what is dividend? Dividend is that component which the company has to pay to its preference, preferred stockholders or equity stockholders or common stockholders. So if there is any dividend which needs to or a per, your annual return which needs to be paid to those capital holders, that is called as dividend. So we have discussed about the numerator piece. What is denominator? Denominator is equity plus debt. Friends, we all know that any company can raise capital or funds from two sources. What could be those sources? One, it can raise the fund internally. That means it can issue certain common stock or it can issue certain shares 
to the equity shareholders and therefore it can raise money. That is called as internal source of funding. What is debt then? Debt is basically the fund which the company has borrowed from some external parties. Okay. If the company is not being able to meet its cash flow requirements through its internal fund, what the company usually do? The company usually reach out to some lenders and they can borrow the funds. And those funds can be long term funds as well as short term funds. That means the company can borrow the debt for one year, three years, five years, depending upon the need. So any fund that the company has borrowed or has invested in the company is, is can be classified either as equity or debt. And what we are trying to compute over here, we are trying to compute return on invested capital. And when I'm talking about invested capital means what? Capital can be invested from both the sources, from equity shareholders as well as from external borrowings, right? Because both amount has been invested in the company. Even if I'm raising some fund from some lenders, that amount also I'm investing in the company. And therefore, when we are talking about invested capital, we consider both equity as well as debt. Okay, so net income minus dividend divided by equity plus debt will give us return on invested capital. Let us try to understand this with the help of an example. Suppose the total sales revenue or the total revenue of the company is say $500,000. Okay, the total revenue of the company is $500,000. The operating cost of the company is $200,000. Rate of tax, rate of tax is say 35%. Total equity of the company is say $5 million and total debt of the company is say $3 million. Okay, so we have equity funding as well as debt funding in the company. The question asks us, the question asks us to compute ROIC. What will be the ROIC of the company? And in order to compute the ROIC, what we will have to do? First, we will have to compute net income. How the net income will be computed? The net income is nothing but revenue. We have already revenue given in the question, which is $500,000. Out of this revenue, I will deduct the operating cost. So that will give me $200,000. So profit before tax will be how much? $500,000 minus $200,000. Out of this, I will reduce my taxes tax at the rate of 35%. 35% was my tax rate over here. So out of that, I will reduce taxes at the rate of 35%. The net income will be then how much? $300,000 minus $105,000, which means $195,000 is my net income. Okay. There is no dividend given in the question. So the in it, we need not re reduce dividend from this $195,000. What is my invested capital? As I mentioned, invested capital is how much equity plus debt, $5 million plus $3 million. That means $8 million is my invested capital. So how much will be my ROIC? ROIC will be $195,000 divided by $8 million. That means a 2.44% will be my ROIC. Friends, we have seen what does the term return on invested capital means and we have also computed, we have also seen how to compute return on invested capital. Going back to our chart, which shows the ROIC of Home Depot. How do we know that the ROIC of 25.89% is good or bad? Friends, any ratio, if you want to interpret any ratio, we need to interpret that ratio with either an industry average or we need to compare, compare that with the same ratio of some other companies in the same industry. Any ratio standalone may not really make sense. Why? In this case, Home Depot's return on invested capital shows as 25.89%. The example that we considered 
of any company that shows an ROIC of 2.44%. Does that mean that Home Depot is performing much better than that particular company? May not be. Why? Because each industry may have certain limitations or restrictions in terms of returns. Okay. And therefore, we need to compare the ROIC of Home Depot with the industry average of the same companies or same set of companies. Or we need to compare the ROIC of Home Depot with its key competitors. And in that case, if we see that ROIC of Home Depot is much better than its industry peers, in that case, we can say that ROIC of Home Depot is much better than its peers. Okay, so this is all about return on invested capital ratio.